welcome to episode 2 of our Morella Voyager vlog series. In this episode we have a busy day at sea. We explore the outside areas, we have our first speciality restaurant experience, there's a celebrity on board and we get to meet the captain. Make sure you watch till the end when you'll find out what inaugural gift Morella delivered to every single cabin. There's also a chocolate thief and we need your help settling a dispute. Right oh, yeah. then, let's tell you about our day at sea on the Morella Voyager. And we had a quite a allegedly lion, didn't we? Well, someone did. I woke up just to see a beautiful, beautiful sunrise, but then to go back to bed and managed to snooze a little bit. But by the time I tried pulling out of bed, it was about 10 o'clock-ish. Pretty burnt out from the night before when we had our, obviously, day of travelling. But we decided, let's go to the kitchens to see what their breakfast offerings are. And we will be taking you around all the restaurants on the ship um, over the week, but we thought we've done our evening meal at the kitchens let's see if it's got a good enough choice as well in the morning oh it's hot Lots of oh Paul is back for breakfast in the kitchens what he got oh. got pork sausage yes bacon yes got beans and got toast and I've got two fried eggs that are just delivered fresh oh hope you can hear us it is a little bit noisy in here with yes. lots of people um, but easy to get a table though wouldn't it considering yeah. So Paul, oh, let's see your egg. Oh, look at that. I couldn't even get it to me toast. I asked him to put them on me toast, but that was mm. lost in translation. Oh, look at that. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So, is this banger going to be a good one, Paulie? Oh, that's fine now. They've got two types of sausages at the, at the Banyan Leaf. Yeah. There's pork sausage which I've gone for, and there's a Lincolnshire sausage. Oh, looks good. Perfecto. <laughs> And what was your opinions, Boy Morgan? Well, what they've done is all the restaurants in the kitchens, regardless of whether it's the Indian or the Chinese or or gravy boat, they all do a, a form of cooked breakfast. Yes. Some of them have got an omelette station, some of them do pancakes as well, but generally a good old British full English. But if you didn't want cooked, they had all, it was a very good variety. They had cereals, they had fruit, they had continental, like I say, they had omelette station. So actually a really good choice, wasn't oh, it? Oh, definitely. Busy, yeah. it does get busy in there. It was starting to quieten down when we were in there because we were obviously near the end. It served till 11 o'clock. So another good choice having breakfast in the kitchen, isn't it? Correct. So after that we thought, oh, let's make the most of the sunshine. The forecast before we got on here was really bad, wasn't it? Very wet, but dare terrible. I say, I hope I voodooed it. But it's actually been very good, hasn't it? And the sun was out. So we went up to the pool deck and it was packed, wasn't it? The main pool deck gets busy, like like all pool decks on, on cruise ships. If you're not here early to get a sunbed, it's very difficult to get one. And then we thought, well, let's just walk up the stairs and just have a wander around the top of uh, the pool deck. And we spotted a bar, <laughs> surprise, surprise, called The Shack. Now, this is where if you do smoke, that you can smoke. Well, weirdly, the one side of the shack, it is you can smoke. The other side of the shack, there's a massive sign mm. that says no smoking, and everybody That's was smoking. still smoking that mm. side too. Um, but they've also got carts next to the bar that's got beers and, and, yeah. and that, that sort of stuff so if you didn't want to queue at the bar you could still do that's that that's a really good thing that Morella do they've got like these beer carts that go around the pool yeah. deck like you say if you just want a standard type beer yeah. or wine or anything like that then you don't have to queue at the bar if you want cocktails however I fancied a raspberry collins which is included in the standard package and it was fabulous yeah. it was really good and I had um uh, Fosters. Yeah. <laughs> you the don't normally is, drink Fosters well, at home, do you? But it, the Fosters on here, you really, been, really enjoy it's it. It's been very good. Uh, the draft Fosters have been very good. Now, the situation is, because obviously, you know, lots of people be saying, oh, why aren't you drinking cider? Uh, there's only one, disappointingly, there's only one cider on the standard all-inclusive, which you get a standard in your fare. Yeah. And that's Strongbow. Strongbow is, I find, to be quite horrible. Now, if you upgrade, to be fair, the upgrade is £80 a person for the whole week. Yeah. So it's only just over £11 a day. But you've also got the option of... If you wanted a drink that's not 
in the standard all inclusive, you'll get a price for it. So if I wanted to say they've got Magners, which is quite a nice cider, they've got Strongbow Dark Fruit, which is substantially better than the standard Strongbow, and there was another one which I can't think of off the top. Oh, Bulmers. They've yeah. got Bulmers as well. So Bulmers is a good cider as well. Uh, if I wanted one of those ciders, it's three pound fifty, three pound fifty, or three pound seventy five. Yeah. Bet some, you know, between the two. So, if I think to myself, well, I'll just have a couple of ciders today, and then stuck with everything else that was on the standard all inclusive, well, it'd still be better than upgrading. But there's enough. Yeah. There's enough on there. I had some gin and tonics and that sort of stuff. So yeah. it's all. It's, we it's, talked at length about whether yeah. we should upgrade or not, and we, we were, were like, like we're this, this close we were to this doing close, it. Yeah. And I said, hang on a minute. I said, I'm happy with the wine. I'm happy with the few cocktails that I've had. If I want a, a pink gin or a, a, an orange gin or something like that, then I'm happy to pay the extra. And I don't think we would of the. The things that we want on top of the standard package is not worth £160. I don't think no. we would spend that. And so we've um, decided against it. Yes, so we'll let you know by the end of the week if that was a good plan or not. And other, what other cruise lines do is if you chose a drink that was outside your package limit, they might give you 10 or 15 or 20% off the price of it. So if you're looking at a drink that's, say, £8, you'd still have to pay £7 for it most of the time. Whereas on, on Morella, mm. to upgrade to a drink that's not in the package, you'd only have to pay like between 3 and £4 for virtually anything at all that you want. Yeah, I think, I think it, it's good. I think it's good. And even though the bars are busy, the staff are happy. Happy, And they are smiling. Yes. We've had no, no issue with that at all no. so far. And then right by the shack, we thought, oh, this, uh, what's around that corner there? We're going to have a look. And we seen some stairs going up to the veranda up there. It's adults only. You'll see from here that it's actually an area that is just full of sunbeds. There's not a pool or a whirlpool or anything like that, but it's really quiet. It's right at the front of the ship. And we managed, there was one bed free, wasn't there? So we managed yeah. to sit there and just chill out for about half an hour or so. And it was lovely. Now, this is where you can also get the cabanas. No, I went to the spa to find out about the cabanas and I was told that if you want to book them for the whole week it costs you £249 and if you want them for just for one day it's £100. And basically you'll see from these uh, pictures that Paul took over the top of a cabana because I couldn't see in. I, I, I took some photos and Karen said to me, was there anybody in there? I said, yeah, of course there was. <laughs> you know, I'd just stick my nose straight over there and take photos of people ah. just enjoying themselves. No, there wasn't no. anybody in so there. So you'll see from here that it's literally just an enclosed cabana that's got sea views um, wouldn't be something that we would do no. but for some people they just like their own private space and it is really quiet there so if that's important to you then that's something to consider and over, over the course of the week 35 pound a day if you're an avid 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 sun worshipper and you want your own space yeah 35 quid a day really yeah doesn't break cheap the bank. For a cabana yeah so, so then uh, after we've been out in the sun, we were not big sun worshippers, worshippers so we went, we were only out there for about half an hour, like, I mean, oh, Carol, we're hot. Carol can't even say sun worshippers, no. so obviously it's like... No, we were getting quite hot, weren't we? So we thought, let's go and find some shade. And the night before, we'd met, um, travelled with Johnny and Will and gone for a beer at the summer house, and that was lovely. It was that day after the ship, and uh, we wanted to see what it was like in the sun, in, in the daylight. Yeah. So we walked all the way down to the other end of the ship and it's a lovely, lovely area. It's got a retractable roof and it's got a little stage in there where we've seen Peter Cox, a guitarist who was doing a lot of sort of reggae numbers, was which was very a, good. It was almost like a full a full back catalogue of Bob Marley and yeah. it was fantastic. But with the summer house area, you've got an outside area yeah. and you've got an inside area, which as Carol said, has got a retractable roof on, which for some strange reason, despite the fact it was a million degrees, yeah. they had the roof closed. Yeah. But but on, in the inside area, which, which is where Peter Cox was playing, lots of comfortable seating. We got a seat right in front of where he's performing. We had a beer. And what's nice as well, if you're on the outside bit, everything's in plastic glasses. If you're on the inside bit, it's in glass glasses. Yeah. And everything tastes better out of glass. It I does. don't know if you, if you don't agree with me, why well, you're a silly Billy. Yeah. Um, so the summer house, uh, either side, you've got um, Nonna's which is like the pasta and pizza, which we'll be bringing you more information about that soon, and also abulas. Abulas. I don't even think that was a word. <laughs> it was just like she'd have a stroke there halfway. <laughs> <laughs> How's it said then? I'm going to say abulas. Abulas, yes. But obviously probably, that probably. could be wrong. And they're, um, 
like a tex maxi thing mm. they can't come back on it's like oh mate they do nachos and salsa and i know and, and, i and, love nachos yeah. so we're going to be finding out what well but i didn't have them then because uh we had surf and turf booked which we'll be telling yeah. you about shortly um but that is a really nice area lots of tables for twos that aren't close to each other um so that all that summer house area we've been really impressed with yeah. haven't we and then um on the program today on the cruise news was uh jenny ryan for you people in the UK you'll probably know that name as one of the chasers from the very very popular program The Chase with Bradley Walsh and she was on, she's on here just to give her basically a, an audience with Jenny Ryland yeah. wasn't it Jenny Ryland Jenny Riley no <laughs> Jenny Ryan Jenny Ryan <laughs> yes do you know what a scary thing is? No alcohol has passed no. her lips today. No. And honestly, it's, it's like a um, bunch of bumbling, bimbling, baboons. bunch of baboons. <laughs> Try saying anyway, that five times. So fast. you tell them everyone about it. So it's in the Squid and Anchor. Je Jenny the Vixen Ryan. That's it. Of the Chase fame. And apparently, we don't watch X Factor anymore, as I have in years, but she, um, she won or she did very well in Celebrity X Factor. And we were in um, the Squid and Anchor, which is the pub. I have to say, we haven't complained about anything at all thus far into this cruise, but I do have to say, they so misjudged the popularity of Jenny Ryan that the queue to the bar was 80, and you know I don't exaggerate, 84 miles that's how far we had it was so long it took me we had to queue onto another ship that was following us behind that's how long it was. i queued up it took me about 20 minutes yeah. but they had one waiter who, who was, was like, just clearing who, glasses who was like so under pressure yeah and i was like oh um oh mate can i uh, get some drinks and he's like no because <laughs> no. he was he was just a glass was... picker upper so it was worth a shot to try and get a drink yeah but, it, um, it was a bit frustrating yeah. when that you could see everyone get a little bit fraught. Yeah. Um, so they delayed the start of the show a little bit because there were so many people queuing. But we got there eventually, and when she came on, thoroughly entertaining. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. I know I'm in direct competition with Afternoon Tea, which I know is very, very tricky to compete with at the best of times. But thank you all. At one point, I was. Uh, I was a receptionist at a cosmetic surgery, so uh, quite a few familiar faces over <laughs> there. From a very shy um, young girl to becoming one of the biggest quizzes in the world, it it was quite inspirational. Yeah, it wasn't was, it? yeah. And lots of sort of behind the, behind yeah. the scenes, secrets about the chase, <laughs> which obviously we can't take. It's just, yeah, we had a great seat. We were sat on some stools, um, sort of halfway towards the back, and everyone was being very polite, standing, you know, making sure that everyone can see. And then, about twenty minutes into the show, two people just walked in and just stood right in front of us. And I thought, hang on a minute. She didn't think, her, hang on a minute. <laughs> she gave them both barrels and sent them away with their tails firmly between their legs and I have to admit I was sat next to her and it was a very proud no, I just, moment. I just said to them excuse me I said you're blocking our view you can't just walk in 20 minutes after that starts and stand in front of people that have been here a half an hour earlier so that's really rude and she sort of looked at me huffed and puffed and walked off but I thought I would never dream of doing that of standing in front of someone well, and blocking their view. Well it wouldn't matter if you stood in front of them because they'd still be able to see no. over your head. Anyway um, but some people just just, do you know, some people say about Morella that, that you can get quite a few people that maybe don't have the best manners and stuff on board or a bit... Um, I'm just, I've word? just realised what you're doing. What? You're having a Paulie Morgan rant. I am. Oh, I, well I, I am. Get, I might as well get my coat then. I no, <laughs> people say that uh, Morel is a bit like Bertolins at Sea, and we don't agree with that. Um, but you can get a few characters that can be a little bit... Um, characters. Ca that can I, be a little bit... Uh, social etiquette isn't really high on their priority, no. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but most people that we've found on this cruise have been absolutely yes. fantastic. Anyway, um, but anyway, we don't... You need to let that go Yes, then, I did. So I'll let it go. It's gone. Off. So yeah, so Jenny Ryan, if you get a chance to see it, it's really What's interesting. What's her name again? I said it right, didn't I? Jenny Ryan. Yeah, it was really, really interesting. One of the perks of having a junior suite is that you can have six items of clothes pressed in the first 24 hours of your cruise. It was nice to see that my selection of shirts were back in time for Dress to Impress Night. 
Right then. Right then. So it's Dress to Impress Night, and we are off to Surf and Turf. Surf. Yes. A specialty restaurant that we've done on Discovery, but obviously not on the ship because it's the main voyage. So come with us and let, we'll let you know what we think. Anything you want to pull more? Nothing at all. Let's go. <laughs> If you get lost on a ship as much as Carol does, this interesting fact should help you out. The three staircases on the Morella Voyager are colour coded to designate what part of the ship you're actually on. It's blue for forward, red for midship and green for aft. It was time for Surf and Turf. We booked an early table for six o'clock because we didn't want to miss the evening's entertainment. And little did we know that um, there's other bloggers on this cruise called Travel with Johnny and Will, who we've met up, the Irish guys, and they've been so much fun. And uh, we basically arrived at Surf and Turf at the same Great time, wasn't it? And they had a book table booked for six. So we looked at each other, well, should we have a table for four? So we decided to ask, and they delivered. Yeah. Lovely staff in there, yeah, they're fabulous, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Well, it's been, that's been the case straight the, yeah. the ship so far, hasn't it? Hi, good evening. Hey. <laughs> Hello there. We've got a table. We? We're good, thank you. We've got a table for two booked under the name of Morgan or Morgan Slater. Morgan Paul, yeah? Yes, cabin that's, number in, one zero zero six. that's the one, yes. So rather than two tables for two, can we put them yeah, together? Yeah, you don't have number, sir. Uh, good question. Uh, it's uh, 8239. These are the guys that are making trouble at Surf and Turf. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> As you don't know, Surf and Turf is uh, Morella's specialty um, dining for, for like a steakhouse. We booked, what did I say? No. You didn't say anything, but I mean, talking about stately obvious, Surf and Turf is like a steakhouse. They do surf and they do turf. But they do do um, cauliflower steaks and different things. You know you said do, do I don't well. know. <laughs> anyway, we booked before we left home and it's £31.95 per person. As you can see from here, the menu, we thought it was an excellent choice, was not on the menu. We chose a sharing platter to start, which was absolutely delicious, wasn't it? It was delicious, but I don't like um, smoked salmon or you know raw or whatever undercooked you don't salmon. Like salmon of any no sort, i don't like salmon full stop and one of the things on the sharon platter was salmon but there was enough other things on there that i thought well that's worth delicious that's worth pork. a try yeah and so there was these like lovely little slice of pork which was the divine um there was like i said the salmon which i didn't like and then there was this thing and it was like um oh i'll tell you what it was i can just remember the name Ford. it was called a croquet a croquette croquet is the game a croquette <laughs> of short rib yes so it was so it was this mm. pulled short rib inside a croquette and i have to mm, say delicious. it was amazing and some prawns and some prawns for my main i did do the surf and turf option and basically what you've got is you've got several things you can have for the surf and several things you can have for the turf so i had mm. a medallion of fillet steak and i had what's called drunken prawns and I have to say, I love prawns. I've had a lot of prawns. I, I should look like a prawn, I've had that many. <laughs> These prawns were, I'm gonna go out there and say it, the best prawns I've ever had in my life. They were absolutely divine. They were just not over, because if you overcook prawns, they go as hard as a bullet. Um, they managed to infuse all this beautiful flavour into it. They were moist, they were succulent. They nice were amazing. <laughs> and, I, the, and the steak was fabulous too. Yeah. I went for just a T-bone, didn't I? No, you went for a rib. No, a T-bone. I never have a T-bone. A ribeye. Yeah, I had a ribeye and it was absolutely delicious. Cooked to perfection. We all had steak because um, the guys had steak as well. And everyone was different and everyone came out perfectly cooked, didn't it? Yes, and I will say on a tangent, um, Will, who was sat next to me, he had as a starter um, a pate. Yes. And when it came out, 
it was shaped like a little red apple. Now I did yes. get a picture of that, so I'll put that in. So even though I didn't have it or Carol didn't have it, yeah. it's worth throwing a picture in. And that was divine. And then what you get as well is you get these choice of sides. And we said, going, before you go into sides, going back to the apple, it reminds as soon as it came out, we thought, oh my god, that reminds us of Wonderland, Wonderland yeah. on Anthem of the Seas. Yeah. And if you wonder what we talk about, check out our Anthem of the Seas cruise vlogs because yeah. that was a, a fun experience, yes, wasn't it? it? Was. And Carol says to the waiter, well, there's a list of sides. Well, how many sides can I have? And he's like, I'll have them all. I'll have as many as you like. So I chose the truffle mash, and I had green beans with tomato, like a tomato dew on top. Cauliflower. Oh, I had vegetables. Cauliflower yeah. and broccoli and carrots, which were lovely. Were really exciting, yeah. <laughs> you had the so lobster Carol, mac and cheese. So Carol had the rubbish ones. I had lobster mac and cheese, which was amazing. And they said, can I have some of your lobster mac and cheese? You can have some of my vegetables. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a trade. Uh, that's a trade I you want to know. And I had steak fries and I had sauteed mushrooms. Mm. And it was all fabulous. It was. And well, the service was all fabulous. Was her, veg her vegetables were rubbish. <laughs> no, they were. They were but. good. They were, they were and, perfectly cooked. And then for dessert, mm. you've got three seconds to guess the answer to this before we reveal it. One of us had a fruit sorbet sorbet and one of us had a triple <laughs> chocolate dessert yeah see if you can guess who had what but it came with a little chocolate well you'll see here yeah because because we're on the maiden voyage of the Morena, um voyages so that was fun but the whole thing the whole event we had great company with um johnny and will well, the service was impeccable and you can see them cooking all in the restaurants which you see here and the, the chefs gave us a lovely wave as we as we left which yes. was brilliant so if you are if you love your steaks and you're coming on Morella Voyager we definitely recommend uh, Surf and Turf Right, we were stuffed, weren't we? So we thought, let's go for a nice walk around the promenade. Now, the um, Morella Voyager doesn't have a full wraparound pro promenade, but it does have one that goes in the side, round the back and the other side, doesn't it? So we thought, let's go out. The sun was setting it, and it was beautiful, wasn't it, Paulie? And I busted out the Insta 360. Yes. And I managed to get some pretty decent shots, which we're going to insert in here now, I would imagine. I've already... By the time you're watching this, put out a, a couple of shorts as well using uh, Insta. So hopefully you. Well, hopefully more you, than a couple you, by you've, this time. You, well, no, I've done two now, mate. That's enough to keep you happy. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so you might have said something ah. already, and yes, it was just lovely being out on deck and yeah. wake views. You can't beat them. It was. And walking a little bit of our dinner off. It was. And then before we knew it. Well, I would just want to add in here about the outside space because uh, we mentioned the smoking area by the shack earlier by the pool the aft bar part of the promenade you walk around the back end of basically the squid and anchor and it is a smoking area um so it, it wouldn't be somewhere that we could come to be sit no. No. which is a shame it would be nice if half and half was yeah. smoking half wasn't uh, but when we were there it was there was about two people down the other end so it's actually a absolutely perfect or maybe they should just have um, a ship where smokers can go on a smoking ship. Yeah, a smoking ship, a but a non-smoking ship. We yeah. don't mind it. It's just fine. You know, just it's just just life choices, yeah. and that's fine. But yes. for us, you know, um, that, that's not our thing. Yes. So after enjoying the fabulous weight views, yes, it was show time, and it was. It wasn't. It was captain. Meet so, the captain. <laughs> See, I let him loose to say, <laughs> do the intro bit, and you've, you've skipped. You've missed out the captain, the most important see, man on the ship. See what happens? Uh, she does poorly rants now, and <laughs> then when I'm allowed to say stuff, I get it wrong. But anyway, so Squid Manker, we got front row seats to meet the captain, and you're all here for one man and one man only. He is the master of Morella Voyager. Please put your hands together for the main man, Captain Steve James. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Wow, so, uh, yeah, as Johnny said, my name's Steve James, and I have the, uh, well, I'm lucky enough to be the first captain of uh, Morella Voyager. Um, I did start off my career on a submarine under the water, so uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit surprised they chose me with the, to trust me with their new ship, but uh, uh, it's very nice to see you all here. How, how are you finding it? Do you like our new ship? Yeah. I'm really, really happy to see all of you here, here today. And I have to say, I don't think we could have chosen a nicer lot of passengers for our inaugural cruise. You, yeah, you really all have scrubbed up very, very nicely. Um, yeah, even you, sir. Yeah, yeah, as well. And uh, I think 
it's not something I often say, but I'm, I can hand on heart say you are the favourite passengers we've had on Morella Voyager. <laughs> you really are. Yeah. So, anyway, a, a very warm welcome on board from myself and the team. I've got uh, 800 of probably the finest seafarers afloat to, uh, to look after you uh, this coming week. Are they doing a good job so far? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Now just remember, they're also new on board, so whilst you're all getting lost walking around, so are they. So uh, if any of them ask you for, uh, for directions, please do uh, point them in the, in the right direction. Um, but I'm sure we're going to have a, a fantastic week ahead. And I did offer to buy them all a drink tonight, which I, yeah, which I thought was very generous. Uh, but only a few of them turned up, which is, uh, which is good. Would you, would you like to meet those, those few that turned up? Yeah? The Luge and his team will be keeping the uh, keeping the bars stocked uh, all week for you. Um, he's also in charge of tasting the cocktails each morning. So he's, he starts at 7 a.m. when some of you are just finishing. He's uh, he's out there starting, and uh, which probably explains why he's one of the happiest people on board the uh, on board the ship. I think Tamara and her team. I think she's got about 100. Uh, is it 150 people? Tamara, you've got yeah. 160. Okay, she's she's gained 10 since we since we left Palmer, but uh, she's her and her team looking after all the restaurants and uh, and keeping you all fed and watered. And of course, to do that, we need a man who I'm hoping is going to be really easy to find here. We need our executive chef, Ritesh. Where are you? Over here. Here he is. Okay, this man over here. All, all the way from India is uh, is responsible for your, for your clothes shrinking uh, this week. Okay, so that's the face. That's the one to blame over the, over there. Uh, looking after, I think, 15 food outlets actually. So a lot of restaurants that are, that that he's running. But to tidy up after all of you, we've got our chief housekeeper Olga. There she is, all the way from from Ukraine over there. Welcome. And uh, Olga's in charge of those ninjas. You know the ones that you leave your cabin in the morning looking a little bit like a teenager's bedroom, and by the time you come back, it's looking all, all shipshape and Bristol fashion again. So that's Olga and her team. Thank you very much to uh, thank you very much to them. So Meg is our guest relations manager. She's running the boys and girls at uh, at reception, dealing with all your queries and uh, and questions. So anything like that, please head to them. They're there 24 hours a day. And then finally. I have my staff captain, he's my right hand man, he's running all of the sailors, uh, he's running the medical, the security, and he's managed to paint the ship with, can you guess how much paint we've put on the ship in the last two months? Any guesses? 27,000 litres of paint, yeah. That's a lot of trips to B&Q, but the staff captain, where are you Valeri? Here he is, over there. This is our staff captain, Valeri, doing all the jobs that I don't want to do. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, that is, my, uh, that is my senior team. We are all here to make sure you have a fantastic week with us, and I'm absolutely certain that you will. Uh, have you still got a drink? Should we, do a, yeah. should we do a toast? Oh, Johnny as well, I forgot Johnny, sorry. You, you introduce yourself, don't you, Johnny? Yeah, so Johnny, our wonderful cruise director. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, you have, if you've got a glass, what, let's have a toast, shall we? To, uh, well, let's have a toast to, to voyaging with new people to laughing with new people, to eating with new people, to dancing with new people, and to sleeping with a, um, oh, a clear conscience. Cheers. Uh, lovely guy, he seems, um, from well, Cheltenham, just I up mean, the road, road he, from us. He is from Cheltenham, so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, about uh, ten, 10 minute um, ride away. He's very young. She's yeah, very he's young. I don't, I don't know, know if he. I don't know if he. Um, he looks you know, young. If uh, he's aged really well, but yeah, he looks really young. We had a little chat to him after, and I had a photo took with him, and it transpires that his parents live in a little suburb in Gloucester called Long Levens, and that's the very place that I met the lo yes, we the, met lo the lovely Carol Morgan <laughs> Slater, who was just a plain old Carol Slater. Then <laughs> I was, uh, yes, and um, that was our first uh, acquaintance and acquaintance <laughs> where we met at Long Levens Road Club. Twenty eight years ago. I know. Oh, it's wedding anniversary in a couple yeah, of days. It seems like five hundred years ago. <laughs> 
but anyway back to the the main man himself the only thing I would say he would say oh Olga's over there and they were all waving from in the crowd but I'd like to see them come on the stage yeah, so I can see their faces yeah, and right get some nice photos yeah. um, but no but the, I suppose that just sums up morale it does they like, they like to do things less formally well I think and just because they are just chatting to, yeah. to passengers yeah. it's as soon as you get on a morale ship, I know we keep saying this, but everyone, whoever, wherever you're going, people will stop for a chat or smile. Um, the staff have been spot oh, on, haven't bloody, they? Apart bloody, from I'm earlier bloody, in the... I'm bloody sick of it, to be honest. <laughs> All I want to do is get to where I'm going. Oh, stop talking to me. No. No, it's, it's, wor- been, it's, it's wonderful. It's been absolutely lovely. So, um, so, yes, but then it was showtime, as Paul quite rightly says. Well, what was that called, then? Havana Nights. <laughs> so we went back to the um, Broadway Theatre... It is Broadway Theatre. No, it's the Broadway Show Lounge. Yes. And we decided, if you've seen our um, previous information, we sat right at the front row for the previous show, and that was a mistake at Jamaica, because we were like that, because it's quite high. So we sat about three rows back, didn't we, with a little table, picked up a drink on the way in, which is always lovely that Morella do, and sat down for Havana Nights, and oh my. It's just words can't describe how off the chain... Fantastic. Like you said, we said on the previous show, um, a strong show team, good vocals, good dancing. The Havana Nights had the added attraction of the two professional dancers. Yes. Who um, I really want to try. I know it's um, we're no dancers by any stretch of imagination, but I really want to try and get to one of their classes because that'd be yeah. crap. Yeah, they but, were fabulous. So, and what was great as well is even though they're obviously a, a couple, as in professionally, I don't know what their personal lives are, but that's neither in nor there. But even though they're a couple <laughs> dancing, they didn't just dance with each other during the show. They were mixing and matching with the other dancers, and some of the stuff they were doing yeah. was absolutely bonkers. But I wasn't. there and we both looked at each other and went, oh my god we were buzzing weren't we yeah, it, was fun, it was just that you know Cuban vibe the fantastic music so if you get a chance to go and see Havana Nights then definitely do then do so last up I'm gonna get it right this time it was uh, back to the, our third visit of the day yes. to, the, to the Squid and Anchor. Johnny, who's the cruise director, and he's great fun as well. To be yeah. fair, he's a good laugh. Yeah, he was doing a bit of a cabaret, a bit of a cabaret himself in the Squid and Anchor. So he hot tailed it up there, yeah. and we got a seat right by the, the side of the stage. Yeah. And as I wandered off in search of a beer, we toilet. Know, uh, oh, it's a toilet. Well, I always need a wee toilet. Um, <laughs> I, I got accosted by Chloe, who we talked about in our uh, previous yes, vlogs. Who from used to, Warner's. Who used to work at Warner's, and now she's on her first contract on Morella. Yeah. And she said, oh, hello, where's Carol? I said, oh, she's over there. Oh, why don't you come and join us? And we thought, well, that like, sounds good to us. So we went and sat over there, and we also bumped into Terry. Yes, Terry and Hazel Terry from and Morella Cruises All Ships. Yes. They've got fa- run a fantastic Facebook group. Yeah. That's lovely. So, hi guys. Yeah, so check. So if you get a chance, check that out. Yes. And we sat, and there was Chloe, and there was Neve, and, and there Lewis, was Lewis, and Georgia, and Georgia. And they're all part of the exchange team, which we're, we're going to talk about the exchange. Um, we'll do that later. Yeah, we'll do that later. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we sat there chatting with them for ages, and with Terry and Hazel, and it was lovely, wasn't it? Johnny was performing. And he's great, wasn't yeah, he? Fine, uh, yeah. Put on a great show, and before we knew it it was 20 to 1 right then so we've just literally walked in after a great night out what are you doing Paulie I'm trying to turn the lights on there you go okay got a nice view of your armpit there um <laughs> he's already eaten the chocolates off the pillows that's what they're there for <laughs> but anyway we've come in to our cabin and look at this on the bed so we've obviously got um Balcony washing. Tomorrow will be completing our weekly balcony washing. Okay. We've got, obviously, we're in Jackie of France tomorrow, but we've got a present look. Look at this. Open it up, Paulie. It goes this way. Oh, I'm going to you know that. It doesn't go that way, you feel or not? Look at that. We've got a porcelain plate of, um, 
commemorate the first day of Murrah Voyager on 3rd of June 2023. And that's what we're on. <laughs> How lovely, isn't it? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop up to the kitchens, no. get some sandwiches. No. Oh, isn't that a lovely <laughs> gift? We've already had a, a coffee cup. What about Mr. Pig? Well, that's a dog. It's not a pig. It's a dog, Paulie. I'm sorry, maybe that's a pig. Right, OK, comments below, please. Is this a pig or a dog? I'm saying that's dog. That's Mr Pig. <laughs> sorry? That's Mr Pig. <laughs> no, it's not. That's it's a, a dog. Definitely a dog. He's got a curly tail. No, he hasn't. Yes, he has. I can see in the back of the mirror. Damn. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Morella. That's awesome. So every passenger on this um, voyage has got one of those. Well, that's definitely a pig. No. <laughs> oh. Pig's ears. Fuck. That's dog's ears. Pig's ears. <laughs> oh. Join us in episode three, where we reach our first port of a Jessio in Corsica, and we show you more of the new venues that Morella Voyager has to offer. Oh.